we're ready to go. Uh, I'll pray. We'll start. Our Father in heaven, bless us this morning. It's a, it's a subject that we need wisdom and tact and discernment. Please supply it. There's none down here as far as I know. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject this morning is um, back to computer science. When I was uh, with my CPM computer, Oliver's never heard of CPM. You ever heard of DOS? You know any of these things, right? The older people, we know what CPM is. I'm the only old one. CPM and the old operating systems. I had a computer science class. I took one in my life. The teacher said, first law of computer science. It may be the same today. Garbage in, garbage, garbage out. That's what he said. I don't know if that's true. I'm not saying our brains are computers. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying what you put in may affect what comes out physically as well as spiritually. I, I wrote this. We are what we eat. Is that true in a physical or a spiritual sense? Oh. Okay, God wrote this one though, Mrs. Uh, Joanne. Anything which is taken into the stomach and converted into blood becomes a part of the being. And we say that was uh, that was leaky gut class yesterday, right? Food stream into the bloodstream. Now, if you eat junk food, you've got a junk, junk body. Okay. <laughs> if you have spiritual junk food, you've got a junk mind. Now I wrote this, so uh, I'll read it. The food we put into our mouth goes into our stomach. It's converted into blood and becomes part of the body. The food we put into our eyes and ears goes into our brain and becomes part of the character. Now I wrote that, right? Is there a spiritual junk food? Now today it's, it's earthy subjects. We live on the earth. It illustrates the point as words never can. A picture is worth what? A thousand words. Well this morning we got pictures and words. This is a uh, challenging one to read. Uh, Sister Leah, and I'm going to interrupt you several times, probably. Not when most readers always fail to make good practical mothers. They always fail. No, no, you'll never make a practical mother feeding your mind a romance novel, right? Because you're living where? In a fantasy land. Yeah, this is, this is earthy. Keep going. <laughs> they live in an unreal world. They're air castle builders. Define air castle builder. Pie in the sky. Pie in the sky. Yep. Yeah. Next year, I'm going into the, uh, I'm going to be Mr. Atlas. <laughs> I'm going to go down to the bodybuilding competition and win it. I'm going to be, I'm going to be dancing. I'm going to be pirouetting in the Bolshoi Ballet. Come on. Who are you kidding? You're living in an air castle that's pie in the sky. Keep going. Living in an imaginary world, they become sentimental and have sick fancies. Their artificial life spoils them for anything useful. They are dwarfed in intellect, although they flatter themselves that they are superior in mind and manners. Call pause. Is that a difficult world to leave? Once you're locked into that kind of palace, mm -hmm. air palace, is it a difficult world to leave? Mm -hmm. How do you get out? Exercise and household labor are the greatest advantage to young girls. Oh, you need to tell me scrubbing the floor scrubs my mind? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to get my ideas of truth and righteousness from the Google meter. What do you know the Google meter? Come on, you've been getting your information from the Google meter. <laughs> Brother Ryan. Moral power is exceedingly weak when it comes in conflict with established habits. Unlock the, uh, the, the lock on the air castle with the keys of truth. And that's what we're going to give some study to this morning. Truth versus how this thing works. So remember uh, John 18 verse 38, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Now I ask you, what is truth? What is truth anyway? There's a definition, but what is truth? Okay, now I was going to say, if you read that off the screen, which is true, what is genuine and factual? What's it mean to be a fact? Something you can demonstrate or prove. Yeah. You can prove it. Yeah. Well, Okay. Now, when I'm at a real and not false, um, depends on who you ask. Mm -hmm. Man in West Africa says four wives are fine. Man in Tennessee says, <laughs> David says, how many wives? One. <laughs> okay. Right. And Joanne regards it as truth, but a lot of people don't. There must be an absolute. 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you got two schools of thinking, the absolute versus the what? Relative. Relative. And you ask a spiritualist, and they will tell you this. Darlene was one. There ain't no right and there ain't no wrong. If it feels good, what? Yeah. It's just your opinion against mine. What makes you think you know more than me? I make the law in my mind. You make the law in yours. What's right for you might not be right for me. That's a species of relativism mm -hmm. versus absolute truth. Satanic. Do it thou will. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, if I ask you, but if I ask Aleister Crowley, he'll say, good to go. <laughs> so it depends on who you ask. Doesn't it? This is a... Now... Darling, we also used to say this. In this place, what? Anything goes. Here's the problem. Anything. But there's nothing there. How do you get something out of nothing? Hebrews tells you it can't happen. Now, Brother Oliver. Satan path is the broadest and the most deceptive. It is made to appear the most attractive while it is hard money. Yes. Mystified things. I'm full of disappointment. I mean, it, it holds out the promise, right? I love, I love this saying. It holds out the promise, but remember, never it never delivers because it's got nothing to yeah. deliver. I was on the beach with Sean, and they had these. Uh, the lots cost six, ten million dollars. What is it? Where are those lots? The lots on the beach, and then the house on the lot probably cost more than the lot. It holds out the, but it can't deliver because there's nothing there. It's an air castle built on the beach. Isn't that true? Can a house not be a home? Yeah. yeah. You don't deliver unless you got a house. Can you have a house in a wheelbarrow? Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what we used to call it. No, this is what we used to call it. I'm sorry. We used to call it cheap yeah, you don't know that saying yet. Cheap thrills. You ever heard that? Cheap yeah. thrills. Yeah, cheap thrills. Yeah. So we call it cheap thrills. Now, I'm going to be a little tricky for a few minutes, if that's okay. Is that truth? As we By the law of the mind? No, 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 give me a yes or no. I'm yeah. erasing all yeah. that. Is that truth? Yeah. Everybody's coming up with that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, is that truth? Yes. Because if that plus that's not that, then what is that plus that? Come on, I mean, I mean come on. <laughs> no, no. If that plus that is not that, then what is it? And I don't want you keeping my accounts if you tell me that plus that's not that. Isn't that true? If you agree that's true, then you just agreed objective truth, absolute truth exists outside of your mind because you just said that's it. And that's not in your mind. That is absolute mathematical truth. Does it exist apart from you? Yes. Do you think it's five? You're wrong. You think it's three? You're wrong. That is absolute objective truth. That's aspect number one of truth. Aspect number two. Uh, I don't know if there's any climate change. Do you? Maybe. Maybe not. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I was about to say, but I'm sure of this. I don't, I don't know about the thunder, but I'm sure of this. Al Gore made a movie. It was called An Inconvenient Truth. I watched it. It's a documentary. It was on, anybody ever seen it? It was on global warming. That's all the thing. Is there global warming? I don't know. But I know the man down the road that puts our axe handles on. I was down there at Thanksgiving, and down here, it's, it's cool, cold on Thanksgiving, 80 degrees. I told the man putting the axe handle on, I said, man, this must be global warming. Just saw the movie, right? Must be global warming. He almost got, 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 uh, he got, he got offended. He said, oh, man, no such thing. <laughs> well, either there is or there's not. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Either it is or it's not. And what you think does not change what it is. is. In other words, uh, aspect number two of truth, your perception no doesn't have anything to do with what truth is. What's, where, where are the smartest men in America found? Here, no. Where are the Valley. smartest men in America found? Silicon Valley. All oh, right, Silicon Valley. You could old let Google huddle up about 500 of those engineers. They go into the tank, think tank, right, the basement. 
They come out and they say, well, we have decided the sun is not coming up tomorrow. <laughs> Would you believe them? No. No. I'd say they're outright educated fools <laughs> because what you say, what you think does not change what is. Well, I'm sure the bridge is in. I know the bridge is out. It doesn't, yeah, right? Yeah, multiple choice. I'm taking the, uh, I'm taking the uh, what do you call that thing to get into medical school? Okay. Say it again. Okay. Yeah, the medical college uh, aptitude yeah. test, like that. Uh, max on it, I think, is 600. I'm taking the test. It's make or break. I've been studying up for you. <laughs> My mom spent a lot of money to send me through school. It's make or break. I get to question five. I don't know if it's, I know it's not A. I know it's not B. C or D? Not sure. What should I do? Guess. Yes, because if I guess I have a what percent chance? 50-50. If I don't guess, what? Zero. 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 Guessing on guessing on the MCAT's okay, right? But guessing on the guessing on the final exam to get to heaven. <laughs> that's that's fruitless. This is the final exam to get to heaven. As I say, truth is not guesswork. Brother, uh, brother David. Selected messages four fifteen. The people of God must know that they do know what is true. Do you do you know any truth that you know is absolutely true? I mean, you know it so much that you stake your life on it. Anything. I don't know a lot of things like that, but I know a few. So this is a uh, part of my formula. Don't guess. Not for what we're doing this morning. Don't guess. Not when it comes to your life. I'll give you one of the things I know. Uh, I tell you what Mrs. White said she knew. She said if the sanctuary is not true, the state of the dead, second coming, the Sabbath, spirit of Christ. She's not as true. God's dead today. God is dead. And God has died and they buried him. That's what she said. Was she sure about her truth? Yes. Well, to be able to say God's a dead man this morning if there's no sanctuary in the sky, that's... <laughs> Sister Nicole? It is as certain that we have the truth as that God lives, and Satan, with all his arts and hellish power, cannot change the truth of God into a lie. Now, even though he can't change it, I don't doubt his plan is to spike your coffee with rat poison, right? I don't doubt that. You know, <coughs> would you agree? So I'm going to Starbucks with Sean. <laughs> We're going to California. How much does a cup of coffee cost at Starbucks in California? Six, seven bucks. Seven bucks. Whew. Seven bucks. Let's go to Crystal. <laughs> Let's go to the Huddle House. So seven bucks Starbucks. Seven bucks Starbucks. That's got a certain ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> and so Sean and I, we say, man, that price is high. We don't drink coffee anyway. But they have orange juice. And I'm, I'm told it's the best orange juice on the planet. So Sean said, what about a cup of orange juice? First question is what? Who's buying? Come on, who's buying? And Sean says, Me. Hey. I say, sure. I have a cup. I get it. I mean, it's good, too. Best thing I ever had in my life. Sean says, have a second cup. I say, first question, who's buying? Who's buying? Sean says, Me. Hey. I say, I'll have a cup. And so as I get ready to drink my orange juice down, somebody distracts me. And they pour into my cup enough rat poison to kill 50 men in about one second. Now, it's odorless and it's tasteless. I drink it down. What happens to me? You die. Pause. But I was sincere. Does it matter? Thank you. Or as Mrs. White would say, you want to read it to join? You're sincerely dead. Now you're sincerely dead. Your, your tombstone will read, sincerely dead. Go ahead. But sincerity will not convert error to truth. A man may swallow poison thinking it is food. But his sincerity will not save him from the effects of the dose. Okay, sincerity? Mm-mm, doesn't matter. There is an objective truth. Guesswork is not truth, right? These are aspects of truth. Your perception does not change what is. Now, that's our first step toward where we're going. Number two, uh, three steps to get well. And we're all nutty as fruitcakes, right? We, this, this, this is the insane asylum of the universe. The angels can't come down here without a little card, right? They get permission to go out of that gate to come down here. Mm -hmm. They are sent on, a, sent on an errand. Mm -hmm. Where? Insane asylum. This is the ward nobody wants to go to. <laughs> Except God the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and all the angels. Hebrews 1.14. Now, three steps to getting well. I'm doing crazy things. 
before you did something crazy, you have a crazy mind. mind because your thought always precedes your action. 23, 7 of Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Now, if you're going to change your actions, you have to change your thoughts. Now we go back where we started. Garbage in? Garbage out. Is it okay to say that? You want to change what goes in your mind if you're ever going to change what comes out. Is it all right to say that? How does it get in your mind? The man that has never heard cursing and swearing in his life, can he curse and swear? Yeah. Well, no. You have to hear it. You have to hear it. Because it can't come out unless it first goes in. Now, I don't doubt we have carnal hearts. The sin is inborn, right? But you don't know how to cuss if you haven't heard it, right? You don't know the lyrics of the song unless you've read it. Um, how about another? What about a, a blind man from birth? There's a red rose. Can you describe what that red rose looks like? No. He can tell you it's sticky, but some things he can't know. How does it get in? If it's going to come out, then how does it get in? Through the the senses. Yeah, there's a picture of it, right? That's it. And uh, so there they are, right? What you hear, see, taste, touch, and smell. How does it get in? Through the gates of the soul. Now, Mr. David, you want to read? All should guard the senses. Let Satan gain victory over them, lest Satan gain victory over them. For these are the avenues of the soul. And this is where everything gets difficult because you read that, you're about to tell me what I should listen to. You're about to tell me what I should eat, what I should look at. Don't you? That's the problem. Christian standards are the outward part of the Christian life. It's what you can see. Administration, recreation, uh, the way you dress, your diet, every, your music. It's the outward visible part. You mean you're telling me I need to guard? Yeah. Guard the avenues of your soul. Because what goes in is what comes out. So, uh, step three. I'd like to show you a couple things, and you tell me if it's a fantasy land or factual. Factual. I mean, is that a Hollywood movie, or is this really a CBS camera crew recording events in Vietnam? Yep. Factual. Okay, your votes for factual? Okay. You think that's factual? Robert De Niro. Thank you. Thank you. That's Robert De Niro. <laughs> yeah, somebody, you know, is a well, I don't know. I don't know. David chimes up. That's Robert De Niro. Come on. Did you see Deer Hunter? I did. Yeah, the Deer Hunter. That's Robert De Niro. That's just Robert De Niro. thing it's crazy that's what they said about themselves this whole thing is what is crazy nothing you just saw was true real and factual but when I watched the deer hunter I was sitting on the edge of my seat weren't you I thought what a movie is that real life is that a platoon over in Hollywood or is that Afghanistan and if you say yeah how can you be sure you got some military guy said so they got a string on their 45 yeah, they pay consultants in Hollywood to make it look as real as possible. Is that Hollywood or is that Afghanistan? Would, now, would you stake your life on what you're about to say? No, because it'd be a, it's guesswork. Yeah. I know, but I'm not telling you. I did look like Tom Hanks. <laughs> I did like Tom Hanks, right? Okay, real life television. Jumping. That's not Sean Penn. No, no. I'll tell you, that's not Sean Penn. <laughs> it, it's, hard to, it's hard to say, isn't it? Real life or is that television? television. Are you sure? Are you sure? I am too, right? Darth Vader's not real, is he? He's not real, is he? <laughs> real life or television? Is that a real penguin? <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. I, I am too. I am too. Is there is there such a guy as a Robocop? No. No. Are you sure? I am too. Now, the call to prayer. Listen closely. Last chance.
pray that he's still out there. Somewhere. He's still out there. Let's pray Mad Max is still out there. Yeah. Hollywood, real life. We're almost done. Hollywood, real life. Are you sure? We know that is not... I hope you know that's not true. That is the product of a video engineer in Los Angeles as he makes these, even though they're very realistic, as he makes these war games. Mm -hmm. We agree absolutely not a shred of reality in that thing. Can you watch these war games hour after hour, day after day, week after week, month after month, and it make you more belligerent, combative, and aggressive? Yes. Next question, how can something you know is not real have a real influence on the shape of your mind? That's the question. Because what you put in is what you get on the rest of the mind. Bring the distinction of those reality or faith. It just registers the actions. As truth. And that's our subject this morning. It registers as truth. Everything you put in your mind, the mind registers as truth. You put, you stand at the gate and control what goes in. But once it goes in like the poison, you got no control whatsoever. The mind registers it as truth. I'll give a couple of examples. When I was a little guy, and you, you people don't know about this, and this is the Twilight Zone. Do, 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 do. You're now entering the Twilight Zone. I would watch that, go to my bed, pull the covers over my head, and shake like a leaf. <laughs> Mom would come by and she'd say, Yes, what's wrong with you, boy? <laughs> Mom, I'm scared. <laughs> Why are you scared? Well, I've been watching the Twilight Zone. How can you get scared watching something you know is not true? Because it registers as truth. And then I watch The Outer Limits the next <laughs> night. No, The Outer Limits. Yeah. Now, remember? Uh, case closed, evidence that cannot be refuted, case closed. Anybody know who that is? In fact, that, that remind, what you said reminds me, there was a guy here in our program, this was, I don't know how many years ago, and I asked him what his work was. He said, I was a biology teacher in LA County, but you're not now? No, I got governated. I said, huh? He said, you know, governated. I don't know what you're talking about. He said, they cut the budget. Who cut the budget? Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I got governated. And I told Ricky, I said, last time I saw him, he was the terminator. The terminator, the governator, the Schwarzenegger. Who is he? Well, that's the last movie I saw, Terminator 2. Subtitled what? <laughs> Judgment Day. That's a nice title for Seventh-day Adventist. That's the last movie I saw. I was a biker. Okay. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I know. They go Harley. In that movie, I, did, I didn't look like that, but I had a motorcycle like that. In the movie, he's being chased by all these people. And Arnold Schwarzenegger reaches out and grabs him and throws him off like potatoes. <laughs> is my blood pressure going up in the theater? Yeah, is it? Yeah. Is my respiration increasing? Are my eyes dilating? Are my bronchial tubes increasing? Is blood flow to my kidneys and pancreas being shut down and blood flow to arm and legs increasing? Yeah, so the strokes of my heart, everything's changing. But Arnold Schwarzenegger is an Austrian bodybuilder sitting by a swimming pool drinking a beer. Dear friends, it's registered as truth. Now this is the olden days before Star Wars. This is going back in time a long time. Anybody remember that old actor? He's dead now. He's got Steve McQueen, right? When this came out, this was like a cutting edge thing. And I was sitting in the theater watching it. <laughs> and this was back in the olden days. This was a chase scene. And as the good guy chased the bad guys, what was my heart doing? Intellectually, I knew this is not happening. I knew they had shut the streets down in San Francisco because he's about to run over about a hundred people, right? The bad guy. You know, the bad guys always look bad, don't they? <laughs> you know, and, and there it is. I was in the theater getting seasick. <laughs> See that car? It's all... Green screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But to me, it was really happening. Yeah, it was just a... What a... Finish this, somebody finish the sentence for me. Cheap? Thrills. thrills. It's not happening. I'm being thrilled by what's not even in existence. 
One more, three more seconds, it'll, it'll end. One more hairpin. <laughs> the guy in the Volkswagen, <laughs> what is all this? <laughs> Come on, your front end will hold up to that. You have flat tires. It's the same green Volkswagen. <laughs> Uh-oh, big, big uh, Cadillac, <laughs> almost hit him. That's all faked, right? The brain can't tell it. Because remember from yesterday, now back, back to yesterday. The eyes are the film, the brain, it, it, no, the eyes are the lens and the brain's the film. This is from yesterday. And whatever you see develops in your brain as what? Truth. It is a law of the mind that it gradually adapts itself to the subjects upon which it is trained to dwell. If you look at it, that's what you become. And behold, in 2 Corinthians 3.18, you, you become that. This is the problem this the, the, the advanced science of, of the brain registering what it sees is true. A woman that catches her husband looking at it, pornography, she comes into the bedroom, he forgot to lock the door, she looks over his shoulder, sees him looking at pornography. Does she know intuitively, innately, that what he is seeing is poisoning his mind? Yeah. Oh yeah. She knows it. Rocket scientist, yeah. Because what you see affects what you do. Yeah. Cool. And again, this is, uh, let me go back to that, to that experience in class. The subject, I tell you about the lady that objected to what I was doing. It was the subject, it was voodoo. It was voodoo music, that was the class that day. And she said, you're gonna show voodoo music in a Christian classroom. And I said, yes, and she said, why? And I said, because when you see it, there are no more doubts. And so uh, I wanna show you a good example of this. Hmm. Anybody read the fine print on the top? Bass. Bass nectar. Yeah, he's, uh, he's the big, well, now he got the lockdown, the pandemic. <laughs> Back before those days, he'd draw 200, 300,000 people in Vegas and get paid a whole lot of money. There's a picture of him. I want to show you a very short little video clip of Bass nectar. It's got two men in it. And if you don't know who Bass Nectar is, you're about to find out. It's got two men. One has short hair. That's not Bass Nectar. Bass Nectar is the guy with the long hair, okay? That's the guy with the long hair. Now, that's bass nectar. Mm, that's his music. People come to that to listen to bass nectar. Now, a uh, short clip from Christian Berdahl. I'm not an advocate of Christian Berdahl. I know him. He's a friend. We work together in Ukraine. He's a nice guy. He's a funny guy. I was having lunch with him. We're sitting at a restaurant in Ukraine, and uh, they serve some meal. They're playing music on the, on the thing. He said, uh, they, so they play this wild song, <laughs> and we're eating. And then they played another one. He said that the first one didn't wipe out her front of the lobe. That, that second one was going to finish whatever was left. <laughs> nice guy, really nice guy. So he's doing, by invitation, it's the National ASI Convention. They invite Christian Berdahl to come in and do a 90-minute special on uh, uh, discerning the, the profane from the sacred. It's nice. But it's a section, and I'm not, again, advocating him as any kind of expert, but he did something. It's what he did. And of course, it's uh, voodoo music. But he did something. My name is Christian Berdahl. Now, this is very interesting. This is an article called High Tech and the Low Frequencies. Reporter Jason Sneed wrote about the huge club and DJ scene, and he wrote about DJ uh, Lauren, or AKA Bass Nectar. A Bass Nectar represents the wave of DJ success, playing amazing sets to dance floors throughout North America and beyond. Bass Nectar's shows have the future primitive feel of all out revelry resulting from the tribal unity of audience involvement. Basically what you could say is what he's saying here is when this guy plays his mixes, um, it goes tribal. Now, let's listen, this will amaze you. Remember this voodoo clip. 
play that one first, or second. When the Lord, I was putting the seminar together with the Lord's direction, I have a, a piece of uh, audio editing software called Pro Tools. And I had one track, and I put in this clip right here. And this is bass nectar music. This is club stuff, right? They're doing all that kind of stuff. So, well, think about this. How many, how many clubs do you think play Mozart? Well, why not? Because Mozart leaves your brain intact, this stuff doesn't, and so all of a sudden you start drinking, because that also messes with the frontal lobe. Before you know it, you're uttering perverse things and beholding strange women. Well, the Bible says it. So God said this, play this music. Now, on another track, put that voodoo over it and see what happens. And does it line up? I'll point when the voodoo comes in, you tell me. Do I need to say any more? That's voodoo laid over modern voodoo. No. That's voodoo laid over modern, modern voodoo. voodoo. So here's a question. If you're going to a jungle in Haiti and you're worshiping the devil, that's one thing. But if you walk into a concert hall and hear bass nectar playing that music, then it got sanctified by a change of geography. You baptized it as you brought it out of Haiti and put it in the concert hall. True or false? You're unaware. But now you're unaware. That's the thing. Spike your coffee with poison. You don't know what's in there. That's the thing, David. Now you don't know. Come on, a, a, a devil worship service in Haiti? You don't know where you're at, right? I mean, they're, they're killing monkeys, pouring out their blood on an altar, running around, jumping out. You, yeah, yeah, you're in voodoo territory. But you go in with 25,000 yuppies and this base nectar, and you're getting the same poison, and now you don't know. You can't say it's not the same thing. You can't. It's the same thing. And what goes in, you lose control once it's in there. The effect, once it's in your ears, and now you don't know to guard your ears, and that's the devil's business, to take you unawares and get something past the guardian at the gate, which should be the Holy Ghost. And then the, the purpose behind it is, right, a, man, a mind educated to feed upon trash. When you look at the Bible, it's just, it's just dead. It is. It's a dead book. An example. If you're putting, uh, let's say you read romance novels an hour a day and the Bible an hour a day. No, no, I'm sorry. Romance novel one hour, Bible two hours. Is that okay? You, you got it, right? No, no. You, you, that's it. One ounce of poison, ten gallons of good stuff, you're still dead. It's just... There's no amount of Bible that will supplant a little bit of poison. Is there? Because they, they don't mix. I'm not claiming to be perfect. I'm not. I'm a mess. But I claim that this is perfect. I am sure this is perfect. Is unable to see in the Word of God the beauty that is there. And I say that's one test for all of us. Take the Bible and read. Just read... Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. Love never faileth. Read that. And if that's ugly to you, you've been eating too many romance novels, right? <laughs> Something has poisoned your mind. Because a mind that is unpoisoned sees in the Bible a beauty that you can't see if you're drunk on the wine of Babylon. Yeah. So this is a nice filter. Uh, this is a nice filter. You know, I, uh, true, honest, yes. The, the Philippians 4, 8, the, the filter. If that is really the filter I should use to guard my mind. Let's see, that's really true. Okay? Let's say it's true. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Then that would disqualify this. Somebody read the headlines on CNN. Massacre. Massacre. 
If you tune, tune into CNN or NBC News or Fox News, I'm not, I'm not discriminating, are there headlines full of things that are true, honest, just, pure, and lovely? No, no way. Because that does not sell news. Nothing but lies. Yeah. But then, David, why sell? Why sell? It holds out a promise, but it has nothing, so it can't deliver. So, uh, the law of the mind, and this happened in, 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 one, in one variation or another. There was a young man here, I don't know, this is many years ago, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. Seven, eight years ago, he was from the Northeast. He came, and the music, and he tact, you need tact, discernment, you gotta be careful, right? We were talking about yesterday, too, you know, you gotta be careful and tactful when you approach anything, hardly with any substance. He liked rap music, hip hop, and uh, listened to it hours and hours a day. At some point, that's coming up in one of the, the, the things we're talking about. It came up that day. You know, by then we had a friendship, and, and I kind of, you know, he tried, as easy as I knew how to say, and I said, you know, if you put that in your mind, because the theme of it is, the theme of hip hop is rebellion, breakdown of the home, and infidelity. Is it okay to say that? Yeah. Come on, you, how are you going to argue against that? And we're going to have that uh, next week. We're going to spend an hour on hip hop and listen and read some of those lyrics and lay them over voodoo and lay it over the Rolling Stones. It's all the same thing. Yeah. It's all the same thing. The words may change a little bit, but. And then we've had a friendship, and he looked at me, and this is this, you just hit your limit. You can be a witness as a health evangelist. You can witness, you can educate, but you can't. You're, you said yesterday you know, the, the, the roots are, are deeply entrenched. It needs a transformation. You can't do that, and I can't either. That, our part, we can't do. You can't do it. Yeah, it's a holy God. You can't do that. But you can't do that. You, you know, you need to lovingly present it. And he looked at me. Uh, he basically, I'm going to tell you, I don't use his language, but he said basically he does not agree. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. But, <laughs> come on, case closed. You know, it, it, try, I'm going to try to get the, the faces. When men are rapping, the facial expressions. <laughs> have you ever looked at, have you ever been anywhere and to see uh, uh, the facial expressions of those that are rapping? It's almost equal to Tiger Woods when he knocks the ball in the hole at the 18th goal and turns to the crowd and they all do what? Same as in the boxing ring. They put up their arms and it's like the gorillas, victory. It is. These animal-like features in the World Cup victors because they just what? One. They beat the other guy. Lord have mercy. So somebody will say, there's a grain of truth in that, right? Mm -hmm. There's a grain of truth in that. But your choice to put on the headphones. Mm -hmm. You sit at the gate, and what you put in, the brain registers as truth. If it didn't, how can violent videos make you violent? Because you know they're not true. We all said it. That is, uh, Winds of War Three, whatever it was, we know it's not true. And by the way, if you're older, when I say older, like over 30, 35, no, no, over 40, 45. Back in my day, and David, I don't know how old you are, but, yeah. okay, you're, 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 you're a kid. I'm the old man here. Anybody ever heard of Pac-Man? Yeah. In my day, you know, you, you ever played Pac-Man? Yeah. <laughs> this is this is the game I was addicted to. This is Pac-Man. Pac-Man. You ever heard? Yeah, Pac-Man. You know Pac-Man, right? <laughs> was it addicting? Come on. Yes. I mean, couldn't let go of the stick. I spent quarter after quarter. Anybody ever seen? I was sitting in you know the 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 the, the these video cafes in different places. I was sitting someplace one time. I saw a guy playing one of these war video games. Whew. Today it's very what? Real. 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 It's not like it was 100 years ago. I mean, you're looking down the barrel of a gun. It's like you're holding it, right? You're holding it. You zero in on somebody and you blow that guy in too. And I think this is the... 
and then it shows it. This is the generation that is being trained up to think like, and I thought, Lord have mercy on those that guard the truth in the last days because their minds are being shaped. You say, well, no, there's a lot of sanity in the world. Why don't you go to Wall Street and find some sane folks? Why don't you try Madison Avenue and find some sane folks? Why don't you try Hollywood and find some sane folks? Why don't you try Washington and find some sane folks? Why don't you try anywhere to find somebody sane? Has the world gone crazy? Yes. I'll pray. Our Father in Heaven, have mercy on this nutty world. But there is a remnant that is, still has a heart for the truth. I pray I'm one of them, so are my friends. Help us to uh, cleanse our mind with a little cleansing the floor, whatever it may take to give us a right mind, to think right thoughts, to do right actions as the earth is soon to close up. God help us to be on the right side when it ends. Ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.